These are red king crab from Norton Sound, which is a different population from the Bristol Bay red king crab population. And these crab actually just came back from Norton Sound. So they are being held in the lab to better understand um, growth, essentially, so we can hold them in the lab, wait for them to molt, and then measure them before and measure them after to be able to measure growth. Um, we can also look at functional maturity. So the size that the size a male has to be to be able to fertilize a clutch of eggs. Uh, right now, this tank is full of both males and females, and this study is sort of uh, just getting ready to take off because these crab just arrived. Yep. So this is a mature female, and you can see that she actually has a clutch of eggs right now. So you can see she's actually much smaller than a Bristol Bay Red King Crab counterpart would be, which is pretty typical for that population. They're further north. We tend to see them not reach as large of sizes as Bristol Bay Red King Crab, but she's a mature female. These are more red king crab, and you'll notice that a couple of these red king crab actually have tags attached to them. And these tags um, are programmed to pop up at a certain date. So the crab has a harness on, the tag is attached to the harness. Uh, when we go out on any sort of survey platform, we can actually attach the tag to the harness. And then these tags pop up uh, on dates when we're interested in and allow us to better understand where crab are moving and where they're located at other times of the year outside of the summer survey period. Cool. Yeah, these are all, um, these actually, yeah, these are Bristol Bay Red King Crab. Norton Sounds, Norton Sounds. And then more juvenile snow crab. So this. These are more uh, juvenile snow crab that came back this year from the Bering Sea. And these snow crab are being held right now for an ocean acidification study that'll happen uh, in the next upcoming year. How many different sort of tests do you have going on at one time? Yeah, it depends. Um, the lab is a busy place. We have lots of scientists here that utilize it to run lab experiments. So at any given uh, point in time, it it differs depending on how many experiments are run. On average, I would say at a time, uh, two to three experiments. So right now we have uh, an experiment looking at disease. We have an ocean acidification experiment. And that's actually relatively quiet for the lab right now. Uh, things will start to ramp up in the spring. A lot of the number of experiments going on depends on how frequently we can get animals back from the Bering Sea. So it's, it's never the same at any given point in time. Um, we can so we can also get uh, crab from the fisheries if the fisheries are open. So uh, tanner crab, obviously out here, we have local tanner crab fisheries. We can get tanner crab from fisheries here, uh, and then of course, you know, if 
uh, we have a Bristol Bay Red King Crab or a snow crab fishery, we can get crab from the fishery itself. The summer survey that we run is usually the most logistically easy to get crab. When I say logistically easy, it's still not at all <laughs> logistically easy. So if you think about it, the boat is coming back to Dutch Harbor. We're actually packing crab in coolers and then flying with them on a plane. Um, the weather is very uh, up and down in both Dutch Harbor and Kodiak. So we not only have to get off Dutch Harbor, we have to get on Kodiak. So it's kind of a two-way unique challenge for us to bring crab back. So it's another, it's another sort of hurdle in trying to understand these species is the ability to bring them back from, from the Bering Sea. And then I can show you one more cool thing actually I just noticed. Um, so these, do you see this, this guy right here that's sort of really, really orange? The, the, with the reddish tan? Yeah. So that crab actually is infected with bitter crab disease, the disease I had mentioned over there. So a lot of times these crab will come back from survey and they, they hang out. Like sometimes the, the transport stress or the stress of laboratory conditions will uh, kind of bring about the visual symptoms of this disease. So this is what my experiment is set on kind of understanding how how temperature affects disease progression and survival of snow crab that are infected with it. And with salt water, what varying temperatures, depending on which tank they're in? Yep, exactly, yeah. Uh, yeah, so here in the lab, we have the ability to, cr to control both uh, temperature and pH. So using those different temperature and pH treatments, we can design studies that are uh, that set out to determine the effects of ocean acidification or warming temperatures on a species like snow crab. That's interesting. You guys are able to test the, the certain very things. Yep. Yeah, because obviously that that question is very difficult to answer when you're you're only out on a survey once a year in a specific point in time. Yeah. It's difficult to understand. Uh, but, but when you're testing them, on, is there a concern to be harming them or anything like that? Or um, yeah, so it's, you know, it's uh, unfortunately, I think the innate um, assumptions of, of any sort of laboratory experiment. So we have to apply for permits for any of the crab that we collect from the Bering Sea. That goes through Alaska Department of Fish and Game next door. So they have to approve any permits of crab that are brought back. Um, there's, you know, it's all of the water that comes in, all of our effluent is UV treated, so we're not introducing anything to the system out in the Gulf of Alaska. So it's, we do have uh, many rules that we have to follow. Um, you know, it's sometimes it, you, you're looking at maybe survival as a response variable and you're artificially creating settings that could kill a crab, but it's, it's ultimately helping us understand how a mortality event like what happened in the Bering Sea might have happened. So you're constantly working with, with fishing game and things like that. Too. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah, we do a lot of cooperative research with Fish and Game Next Door too. So they have kind of their own wet lab actually right across the hallway. Okay. And they are sort of working on their own questions, but we do collaborate a lot on research. So it's a very collaborative environment. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, I think that's all I needed. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Yep.